Hi folks, if you wonder as to what kind of work people do in a software company and how software development takes place, keep watching this video. Let's start from the very beginning. Meet Mr. Banker. He owns a banking business. His bank is not using any software as of now. The report shows that there has been a considerable drop in number of customers due to lack of internet banking facility. So now he decides to invest in banking software. He invites people from a software development firm for discussion. A team of four people from the company meet the bank officials to understand the business problem and expectation from the software solution. The team is headed by a manager. Another team member is a software architect. He can understand technical feasibility of the requirement, meaning if bank officials want some functionality, then he is the right person to answer whether it is technically possible to implement it in the software. But the problem is he does not understand much about banking. So they have a business analyst in the team. A business analyst is someone who has good knowledge about the business domain. For example, if it is a healthcare project, then doctor or someone who has healthcare domain knowledge should be included in the team as a business analyst. In financial projects, qualified people like chartered accountant or MBA in finance are onboarded as business analyst. The analysts understand the jargon and the terms used by business people, which technical people may not understand. The team has some experienced person from quality to understand quality expectation from the project. When the project will be developed, she will certify whether the software has met the desired expectation and if it is ready to be delivered in the production environment. The budget and resource expectations with the expected timeline are taken care by project manager. For the software development firm, the business and their representatives are client. The bank management expects that the online banking website will give lot of convenience to their customer, better accuracy in data processing, meaning less errors. The software should help increase the productivity of bank employees. Good amount of cost saving is expected. Better decision making due to real time information. These are the main business value add expected as return on investment from the software. After a series of meetings with bank officials, the development firm creates a requirement document which mostly consists of scope of the software and the expected timelines. This is followed by detailed analysis and finally generated document is called SRS that is Software Requirement Specification. The gathered requirements are of two types. One is functional, another one is non-functional. For example, a user must enter login credential to do monetary transaction is a functional requirement. Whereas, website should withstand 500 simultaneous users to the bank website without web server going down or performance degrade. This is non-functional requirement. Such requirements need to be architected. Multiple high-end web server and database might be needed. The desired hardware like RAM, processor and software tools are decided based on such requirements. Module leads may help the main architect to come up with such a software architecture. Module leads are the people who usually have good amount of experience in designing. They assist architect and usually lead one or more modules in the entire project. For very large projects, there can be a team of architects and they may have a chief architect as well. The system is then analyzed from functionality perspective. For example, multiple pages might be required for the website. Each page would have related functionalities grouped together like one page for showing bank balance, second page for fixed deposits, third for bill payments, fourth for user profile and so on. In this case, every page is made for different but related functionality. These can be called as modules. Now the modules may interact with each other. For example, home page for the website might show summary from each module and contain links to various pages. Identification of high level module and defining their interfaces, that is how one module is going to interact with other module is done through high level design. Generally a group of programmers work on a module led by respective module lead. By the end of this phase, the team comes up with high level design document or in short HLD. Every module may consist of smaller units of functionality. For example, a method can represent one unit of functionality. The programmers refer HLD to come up with such units and their algorithm, flowcharts, data flow diagram, class diagram, etc. This is called detailed design or low level design or 
LLD. The architect and module leads keep on reviewing the design documents as and when they are produced and provide their feedback comments to the authors of those documents. Review happens for every artifact like SRS, HLD, LLD. These are reviewed by internal or sometimes subject matter experts from outside the team. These review comments are documented and are tracked to see if appropriate action is taken for open action items. This is usually done with the help of tracking tools. After the review of LLD, programmers start writing source code for individual units. Programmers then review each other's code to see if the code is written properly. For example, they may check if the code written is efficient and it has followed coding standards and there is no dead code or unused variables, etc. This is called peer review. Once a program is written, it is tested for its correctness. This process is called testing. Various types of tests are carried out on the code. The first one is unit testing. Here, individually, the units like methods and classes are validated against their LLD. What it means is, by unit testing, programmers verify that the code is structured as per the low-level design document. It is carried out by the developers before they hand over the code to the testing team for further processing. So, a unit tested code is outcome of coding phase of software development lifecycle. This code is further handed over to the testing team, which is led by quality lead. The individual units may work fine, but they may fail when integrated with other modules. This is checked during integration testing. This type of testing is done to validate if behavior of integrated modules are as per the high-level design. On the similar lines, system design is validated during system testing. Various tools are used to check the performance of software. For example, a tool may help in generating 500 virtual simultaneous user requests to the web server to check the peak load performance of the website. Any non-conformance is logged as defect. What it means is, if the software does not behave as per the design expectation, then this is reported as a bug. This is again usually done with the help of a software called Bug Tracker. The author of the code then fix the problem and sends it back to the tester who will revalidate them. The process keeps on repeating till the problem is fixed. Finally, the software is delivered to the client who then validates whether the business requirements mentioned in the SRS are taken care. This is called user acceptance testing or in short UAT. After UAT, the software is deployed in the production environment. The entire process model looks like a V structure. So this is also known as V model. Note that the number of defects identified at the former testing is more than the later. However, the impact of identified bug on cost keeps on increasing as we move from development to the production. And when a bug escapes the testing process and is found after deployment or launch of the product, they may cost very high to the business. The business may have to collect their product back from the market or go door to door to do the free fixes to save their reputation. In sensitive applications like hospital instrument or banking software, quality department carries out various types of testing to prevent the damages. The defect fixing after deployment or future enhancements, these are done under maintenance phase. Let us summarize. In this video, we have learned that a software development is a teamwork carried out by various skilled people in the software development firm. Software development lifecycle begins with requirement gathering phase, followed by designing, followed by coding, which is also known as build phase. A unit tested code is outcome of this phase. This is followed by testing, deployment and maintenance. Note that all these phases are generic engineering phases, which is applicable to any kind of engineering work. Thank you for watching. Please leave your feedback comments.